in this video, what we want to do is uh, work out a couple more examples using implicit differentiation. So our first example, and there's only two of them, but it's going to take a little bit of work on each one, is for what values of x does the curve x cubed plus y squared equals 6xy have a vertical tangent line? Now, all of our other questions asked about horizontal tangent lines. And a horizontal tangent line, we knew that a horizontal line has a slope of zero. This is a vertical tangent line, so the slope would be undefined. Well, what we can do is use the following fact, that a curve will have a vertical tangent line when dx by dy equals zero. So our strategy will be to use implicit differentiation to find uh, an equation for dx by dy and then set that equal to zero and solve it. We'll have to do a little bit of algebra in order to find the solution. So let's go ahead and differentiate x cubed plus y squared equals 6xy. We'll differentiate that with respect to x. So, um, excuse me, with respect to y. All right, so we'll have 3x squared, and we'll have to apply the chain rule to get dx dy plus 2y equals, and then on the right-hand side, we will be using the product rule, 6s, x will be my f function, and y is my g function. So the derivative of the first is just going to be 6 times dx dy uh, times the second, which is just y, plus the first times the derivative of the second. So collecting the terms with the dx dy and factoring it out, I get dx dy in brackets 3x squared minus 6y equals 6x minus 2y. And solving for dx dy, I get 6x minus 2y all over 3x squared minus 6y, and I'll set that equal to zero. And now we want to remember that the a fraction is only equal to zero if the top equals zero and the bottom does not equal to zero. And so that would tell me that 6x minus 2y must equal to zero, which means that y equals 3x. And it looks like we're still far from being able to calculate a value for x. We just now have a new equation, y equals 3x. So what we can do is go ahead and substitute y equals 3x back into the original equation, x cubed plus y squared equals 6xy. So when I do that, I'll have to multiply out 3x all squared and 6x times 3x. That gives me x cubed plus 9x squared equals 18x squared. I'll make one side equal 0. And then I can solve that by factoring in. And, and I'm going to get two solutions, either x equals 0 or x equals 9. So I need to be careful. Remember, what did I say? I said that uh, the, a fraction can be 0 provided that the top is 0 and the bottom is not equal to 0. Well, when x equals 0, y would have to be equal to 0. How do I know that? I know that from the condition that y has to equal 3x. And if x equals 9, then y has to equal 27. Well, when x equals 0 and y equals 0, then dx over dy would be 
uh, indeterminate. I would get zero over zero, which doesn't make any sense. It's what we call an indeterminate form. And so we're going to reject x equals zero because dx by dy is not determined at that point. And so our only solution is x equals nine. In fact, if we go back and look at our original graph, let me see if I can find it without having to do too much work here. Bear with me. So the uh, vertical tangent line then occurs here when x equals 9. and 27, so right around here somewhere, we have a vertical tangent line. Let's answer a similar question in example two. Right, what values of x does the curve 2x times sine of y equals x squared plus 4x plus 8 have a vertical tangent line? So we'll take the same strategy. We'll go ahead and differentiate with respect to y. On the left-hand side, I have a product. So I'm going to use the product rule. So I'll get 2 dx dy times sine y plus 2x cosine of y equals. Now I'm differentiating with respect to y. So x squared. I need to use the chain rule with x squared and with 4x. The derivative of a constant is always 0. So I'll get 2x dx dy plus 4 times dx dy. Let's do some algebra. We'll get all the terms with the dx dy on the right hand side, factor out the dx dy, and solve for dx dy. I'll get 2x cosine y in the numerator, and the denominator will have 2x plus 4 minus sine y. So we're back to the condition where we want to make sure that the top is equal to 0 and the bottom is not equal to 0. So That means 2x times cosine y will be 0. And the only way that can be true is I have either x equals 0 or cosine of y equals 0. But think about this. If x equals 0, going back to my original equation, if x equals 0, I'll wind up with I'll have 0 equals 0 plus 8, and that is, of course, a contradiction. That is a false statement. So we're not going to use x equals 0. So the only way that this can possibly uh, this dx dy can possibly equal zero is if cosine of y equals zero. Now again, having that condition cosine of y equals zero, it doesn't seem to help us very much because I can't replace cosine of y in my original equation. It does not have a cosine of y. 
But let's use some knowledge from trigonometry. If cosine of an angle equals zero, then that means the sine of the angle is either one or it's negative one. So let's consider each of those cases in our original equation. So if I first consider sine of y equals one, go back to my original equation, replace sine of y with one, I'll have 2x equals x squared plus 4x plus 8. That's a quadratic equation with only x in it. So let's make one side equal to 0. I can't solve that by factoring, but I can use the quadratic formula. And when I use the quadratic formula, I discover that the only solutions are imaginary. So sine of y equals 1 gets us imaginary values of x. So that is not an acceptable solution. All right, well now let's use sine of y equals negative one. And we'll replace sine of y in the original equation with negative one. So now I'll have negative two x equals x squared plus four x plus eight. I still get a quadratic equation so I'll make one side equal to zero. In this case, I can solve this by factoring. And I'm going to get then two solutions, two values of x, x equals negative four or x equals negative two. So before I declare victory, remember what I said that if we have a fraction, we have to make sure that the top equals zero, but the bottom is not equal to zero. So our solution is saying that sine of y does not equal one, but sine of y equals negative one, and x will be negative four or negative two. Well, with sine of y equaling negative one, if I put in x equals negative four, I'm going to get some number which is not zero in the denominator. And it's the same is true when I put x equals negative two and sine of y equals negative one into the denominator. So I hope that you found these uh, two examples where we found the values of x where a curve had a vertical tangent line informative and useful.